really excited to talk today about the uh, 2019 uh, early signing day. You know, we've, we signed uh, 14 players uh, as of right now uh, in the early signing period. And we're very, very excited about all the players that we signed. Um, I think this class would rank uh, top five nationally uh, when grading the individual player, not, not cumulatively. You know, we don't lose a lot of seniors this year. And so uh, within the 85 scholarships, there's really not that many uh, spots and limited room. So uh, when you look at the quality of the player, and, and obviously we'll talk about the student athlete as well, how important it is, uh, we think we're, we're as good as we've ever been. Uh, Ten different states represented in the class, five from Ohio, two from Georgia, and then one from Florida, Tennessee, New Jersey, Maryland, Missouri, Texas, Indiana, North Carolina. Uh, the class includes players in nine different positions, four on offense, five on defense. Uh, two players uh, were voted Gatorade Player of the Year in their respective states, um, and five players helped, them te helped their teams advance to the state um, title as seniors, and two of them won uh, state championships. Three players, Zach Harrison, Harry Miller, and Garrett Wilson were all finalists for the All-American uh, Man of the Year um, Bowl down in Texas, and that uh, award recognizes high standards in community service, education, and athletic distinction. I think when you look at this class, uh, some of the things that come to mind are loyalty, some of the things that come to mind are great families and uh, quality student athletes. And, uh, and we're very, very excited about the future as these guys will be a foundation moving forward um, into the next few years. So with that, I'll take any questions. We'll open it up over here to the right. Clay. Uh, Zach Harrison, um, how, did you, how did you make it happen in, uh, when what was said to be a week or two ago is still up in the air? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a long process. You know, as head coach, Jeb Shorter, yeah, you know, had a lot to do with this. Uh, Larry Johnson has been recruiting Zach for a long, long time. Obviously, um, you know, Urban had a, had a big part of this thing, and it's been a, it's been a long time coming. Um, we had a home visit last week. It was really important to sit down in the home and talk to the family about uh, you know the direction of the program and uh, having some some communication just on you know some of the leadership uh, changes, obviously that comes with with the change in the head coach, and uh, you know that communication stayed all the way until until last night. And so it was uh, kind of down to the wire, but uh, couldn't be more excited to have him part of this family, a uh, special young man that's going to do great things. Uh, and he's going to have a lot of help along the way with him to do that. Did you feel good when you left this house that night? Yeah, I did. I did. I think there was a connection made there. And obviously, uh, the connection that, that Larry uh, had with the family was really, really important. And I believe that you know the family trusted that we were going to take care of their son when they came to Ohio State. Fourth row left, or third row left, Dan? Ryan. First of all, the past two weeks, you were a head coach. Just, you just, just named a head coach two weeks ago, and now you're finishing up or early signing day of your class. Just, what has this past two weeks been like for you? Has it been a whirlwind? Uh, exhausting. Yeah. I mean, it started right that, that first day when we hit, hit the road after the Big Ten Championship game, and it, uh, it didn't stop until uh, till now. It's been, it's been a whirlwind. Obviously, any time like this, something happens, you have to make sure that you're building relationships with the guys that you've recruited, but also some of the guys that maybe you didn't have your hands on. Uh, especially some guys on defense, getting to know their families, and then you know also reaching out to some of the guys on the team during this transition and getting to know their parents some more. But a ton of phone calls. Uh, I felt like I had two phones to my ear for the last two weeks. And uh, but but a tribute to obviously what the staff has done here and the relationships that's been built over the last few years. You talked in your introductory press conference about the importance of recruiting kids in Ohio and making that a priority. You've got five Ohio kids out of fourteen right now. How do you feel about those numbers? Is that something that you feel like you need to emphasize even more going forward? Or do you feel like you're about where you should be? Nah, it's always a priority. So uh, we want to make sure that in the next class, that's a huge emphasis as well. Um, but we're recruiting uh, you know, the kids from Ohio harder than anybody in the country. And it's going to continue to be a priority. Front row left. Bill? Ryan, uh, you guys obviously lost a quarterback today. Just where are you generally with that position? Yeah, I mean, uh, Dwayne, you know, we're going to find out next week uh, after the bowl game kind of where he's at. And uh, we always want to have four guys on the roster. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's always a process of, you know, one guy's on the field. And, you know, it's hard to get two and three guys in a game. So, um, you know, it's never going to change. We're going to always look to have four guys on, on the roster. And um, just like anything else, after uh, Dwayne makes the decision, we'll go from there. And it's a, I guess you can't assume that Dwayne's going to go, but... Whatever happens with Dwayne, it does seem like you would have natural successors with Tate and Matthew on the roster, yet you are reported to be interested in some high-profile transfer options. 
why is that the case when you have guys like Tate and Matthew on the roster behind Dwayne? Yeah, I'm not going to speculate or anything like that or, or comment or anything like that. Uh, um, you know, Tate and, and Matthew have both done a nice job in the bowl practice. And this is a great opportunity for those guys to get work and get fundamental work and get better and get reps. Even when Dwayne was in New York, those guys had an opportunity to be with the first and second team and get you know really uh, quality reps with, with, with the offense. And so they've done a good job of that. They're, they're growing, and, and uh, we're going to keep going through that in the spring. What is your confidence level in either of those guys if you do find yourself in a position to have a quarterback competition? Yeah, growing every day. And that, that's the thing is, you know, like Matthew really, when he came in, he uh, came off the ACL and really wasn't ready to practice in the preseason. And then once the season started, you know, he didn't really get a whole bunch of reps because we had the ones and Tate took reps with the twos. So this is a great opportunity for him to step in and start to get some work. And so that's, that's uh, the confidence in him is growing. And then Tate actually had, a, had a opportunities to work with the ones and did a nice job. Right next door, Dave. Ryan, in February before the now, the late signing day, late signing period, what are your expectations? I know it's hard to put an exact number on, I'm not asking you to do that, but just what are your expectations? Like roughly how many do you think you'll sign in that, in that late signing period? Yeah, hard to tell because, it, like you said, it is kind of one of those things. We've had three guys right now declare, and so uh, there's, there's some moving pieces there. Uh, there may be, you know, another couple, you know, a few guys that we're obviously going to recruit going into the February signing period. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep working through January, and, and then as that number moves around, we'll adjust from there. And the grad transfer market every year seems to be growing and growing and growing. That might be something past the next signing day, the, the late signing period. But just how active – you expect you'll be just at least testing those waters as far as grad transfers? I mean, we'll, we'll always look at all the options. You know, whatever we think can help our roster. Um, you know, the guys who are in our program, obviously, you know, they develop and work through our program. And so, uh, you know, they, those guys are obviously on priority. But uh, if there is a need and there is someone that we need to, you know, plug in there, then we'll look at all those options. Second row right, Rob. You talk a lot about family. and When it comes to recruiting, I assume that's a huge piece of it, really connecting. Or maybe somebody mentioned faith too. How does that play into it? That we're really looking at getting a little deeper than just that. And when you mean when we're getting into homes? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think there was some faith right here because you know I, I've only been on the job here you know really for, for a couple of weeks. And so when you step into a home, a good, the good thing was there you know early on in, in, the, in August in the first three games there was uh, there was a lot of communication um, to some of the recruits and their families. So there was some. some uh, familiarity there with the families and myself. So that was good. I think that they felt comfortable with that. So that helped with the faith that you're talking about. Um, and I think that, you know, when you connect with people and you, you look in their, look them in your eye and you sit in their homes, there, there's a connection to be made there. I thought that happened. But we have such great families here. There was a lot of communication along the way. Some of the families, you know, like the Wilsons and, and uh, the Millers and and some of the families that I was you know, close with early on in the recruiting process that were more kind of personal recruits, um, you know, I think they communicated with the other parents to say, hey, this is, this is our experience with Ryan, and this is what you can expect. So I think that went a long way. How many, did you get a lot of questions about transition with Urban being gone? How did you tackle that, I guess? Well, it, you know, that was the number one question. You know, so most people had their phones up. And they would look at their phones, and then they would they'd turn on their phones and just kind of scroll through all their questions that they had while we're sitting in the home because they didn't have a bunch of time. Um, but uh, the first one that came up was exactly that, you know, your direction and, and uh, what you see the vision for the program. And, and the way that I answered that was that you know, we think we have the most comprehensive program from A to Z in the country. And the infrastructure is here, and that, uh, you know, the plan is not to change that. The plan is not to come in and blow all that up. There's a reason why there's been so much success here in the past, and we want to keep that going. And uh, anytime there's a leadership change, there's a change in personality, demeanor, that, that'll be part of this. Uh, but we want to keep really the infrastructure in place. Front row right, Austin. Ryan, what do you remember the first time you met Garrett Wilson or watched him work out? Um, I was watching uh, Matthew Baldwin. So I went down to watch Matthew uh, throw. And uh, I, I see this, this uh, wide receiver drill going on. And I see a wide receiver drill a guy and then drive, I told his dad the story, drive a guy into one of the trees and just start yelling and barking at him. And I said, who is this kid? I said, that's Garrett Wilson. I said, that's Garrett Wilson, the one who grew up in Dublin? He says, yeah. And then from then on, I just followed him really, really closely. Studied his film, got to know, uh, you know, Hank Carter down there is, is one of the more talented coaches in all of America. He had nothing but great things to say about him. And then his film spoke for, for, for itself. Uh, as talented a young man as I've been around in terms of uh, ball skills, speed, changing uh, direction. He could be a Division One basketball player if he wanted to be, uh, but but even a better young man. Um, 
the way he handles himself with the class, and, and that's because they have such a great family. You, uh, you touched on his family and Harry Miller's family. I know you were involved, pretty involved in that. Could you have kept this class together, kept the number of commitments you had without those two sort of leading the way? Uh, I, you know, I don't know, but uh, what a statement about who they are, you know, and it goes back to relationships. Anytime you're in recruiting, it comes back to the relationships and, and the trust that you have. And uh, they had a big part of this. You know, but there was a lot of people that were involved in it. You know, we, we had some great families in this past weekend, the Jacobis, the Potters, um, great people from Ohio, uh, the Stover families. I mean, being able to go through and sit in everyone's house and get a feel for who these people are, it's, it's been a really great experience. One, one uh, story that I, I share sometimes is, you know, Saturday uh, when we were in New York City, we were in down, downtown uh, Times Square, and there were people everywhere. I mean, thousands and thousands of people. And we were in the busiest place in all of, all of the, the world. And the next morning, we drove up to, to see Kate Stover and his family, and I was on his farm with not a person to be seen taking a picture with his pet pig, Ronnie. And it was like the most extreme, you know, uh, New York City, and then up, up on the farm taking a picture with a pig. So it's, uh, that's been kind of my, my last two weeks. Uh, front row left, Steve. From the moment you got off the podium at your introduction from the press conference, what was the next 48 hours of your life like? Ooh, uh, a blur, a blur, yeah. Um, every moment I had, I was on my phone trying to make calls. Um, there was a lot of work to be done, still a ton of work to be done. But in that period, uh, trying to make up, I guess, for lost time, for lack of a better term, and it's just been uh, nonstop since then. You and Chris Holman kind of have some similarities as far as both of you are replacing coaches that, for the most part, probably the two most successful coaches out there in individual sports. Have you had any conversations with him about his experience during his first year and how you may approach things? Uh, yeah, Coach sent me a, a text message. You know, gone back and forth a little bit, and actually. Uh, my wife and his wife had an opportunity to meet this past week and kind of discuss, you know, what it is like and, and, and uh, some of the things moving forward uh, as a wife of, of a head coach in basketball and football here. So I uh, look forward to spending some more time with them. And lastly, obviously, signing day for 2019 class and having you started at all, looking forward to the 2020 class, which will be your first initial class as a coach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's, that's going to be a big one for us, you know. And, and obviously, I think looking ahead, there's probably going to be more guys signed in that class. So, um, you know, we've got work to do there, but uh, off to a good start. Front row right, Bill. Could you describe what you think you're getting you know, as a player in Zach Harrison? Just how good he's, is he potentially? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when you look at somebody who runs uh, a 10, 800 meter dash at his size, uh, in the potential that he has, it's, it's um, you know, you can just, like, you think of this, you know, the bosses in the world and some of the, some of the top defensive ends in all of America. Um, and, you know, he, he thought this thing through. This wasn't something he just jumped to. And obviously being under Larry's uh, tutelage, you know, that's, that's a big part of this thing. And so um, it isn't all going to happen at once, but, but the ceiling for, for Zach is really, really high. As we know, he did recruiting on his terms. He was very precise in how he wanted to do it. Um, how important was it to win that battle, uh, considering you are a new coach, considering that the two programs in competition were who they were, uh, and you were considered to be behind Huge, huge. Um, like any time you're competing, you're competing for, for you know, uh, recruits, you're competing on the field, and, and this was one of those ones we had to win. He's down the street, and um, and so that was, a, that was a big get for us. Second row left, Ari. Ryan, when you are in this two-week transition period, uh, right before signing day, um, I think a lot of people thought that you might want to add a bunch of, of kids, but how important was it, how much of an emphasis was it for you just keep the class intact. I know you guys lost a few, but was that kind of just like the main focus in this last few weeks? Keep what we have intact, go from there, and, and how do you think you did? Well, a couple things. One, we only have so many spots. You know, we it was 14 today and really don't have many more. Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing was that <clears throat> the, the kids that we have, we love. We love these kids. You know, we think that the, the quality of the guys that we've signed here is excellent. So. We wanted to keep keep them all, um, and so that was that was really important for us. But when you look at who these kids are, you know, in the last seven months and their loyalty, it's amazing. You know, what happened in August, and then you know there's a coaching change here down the stretch, and these kids stuck with us. That means a lot to us, and uh, we're not going to forget that moving forward. This is only the second year of the early signing period, but you know, 
know, a large portion of the best players in the country are now signing today. Right. Um, you guys, kind of doing the math for you a little bit, I think might take six, seven more, depending on how things shake out. Is it a unique situation for you guys to be so active in that last three months, needing to fill out this class? And how do you kind of approach that with so many of the kids that are quote unquote Ohio State caliber will already signed tomorrow? Yeah, I don't think it'll be that high. Yeah, I don't think it'll be that high. You know, we, we have to stand at 85. And um, like you said, we don't, we're only graduating, you know, a small class of seniors. And that's three guys that declare. So there isn't going to be that much room. Um, and we want to make sure that we, we sign the right guys going forward. You know, don't just want to take a guy down the stretch just to say we, we took a guy. Um, I mean, this is Ohio State. And we want to recruit the best players in the country. Um, but that being said, you know, we're going to do a really good job of identifying who's out there in January and evaluate them. That'll be really important here. Um, because I think that's a huge part of that. You know, you go back and you look last year, you know, guys like Chris Olave maybe weren't the highest recruited guys uh, in the world, but, you know, come in and as a starter and had a major impact this season. So we've got to do a great job of evaluating in January. When you talk about your offensive line, just a quick follow-up, um, if Michael Jordan goes pro, you guys will have 11. It, it looks like you might need two or three more. Can you just talk about the state of offensive line recruiting? Can you evaluate the way Greg Sujuara has done this and how much of an emphasis is that going to be? Yeah, it's going to be, it's, it's important to go identify them. You know, we, we got to do uh, a really good job, obviously, in the 2020 class. You know, we're a little bit down in, in the O-line. So, um, you know, we got to do a great job moving forward to get that addressed. Um, you know, we're hoping Mike stays. Obviously, that'll be a huge part of this, um, this next year. And so, uh, into January, we'll keep looking at it. You know, we have a few guys, obviously, that we're, we're, we're close with. And so, we'll just look close those guys out. Uh, second row right, Tony? Ryan, uh, Marcus Crowley. Yeah, you had two running backs committed for a while. One, I don't know if you guys decided to look elsewhere, he decided to look elsewhere, but why Marcus Crowley and, and what kind of process went to uh, seemingly being off the radar to a week later he's a Buckeye? And, and what have you seen in him? What yeah, come, comes from a great program. You know, Sean Wade, Street Johnson both come from the same high school. Uh, much respect for, for all the coaches there and, and what they do with their program. So that was, that was the first thing. Second thing, you know, he was Gatorade Player of the Year in, in the state of Florida. I mean, that's saying something. He had a great year. Uh, he's a big back. We think he's got great potential. He's going to come in mid-year, and so uh, you know he became up on the radar, especially after having after having the season that he had. We jumped all over him. We're really excited about him. Uh, Brian Sneed, is he going to be? Is, is he eligible to play in the bowl game? Will he be with you guys? Yeah, I don't have an update on him right now. Uh, and what I'll do, I'll let you know. Third row right, Bill. Okay. Uh, Coach, I mean, obviously it's important at all positions, but how does recruiting slash managing relationships with quarterbacks change when you go from offensive coordinator to being the head coach, like you said, there's only one ball? Uh, you know, it, it doesn't change all that much. Um, I do think that after the season that we had with Dwayne, uh, the interest level is at an all-time high. Uh, people are very, very excited about what we're doing on offense. The quarterbacks uh, are very, very excited about getting into this offense. And so that's that's exciting. That that's fun uh, to to have that opportunity. But but you know, still going to be very very involved with that as we move forward. And, and um, so that's exciting. Well, I, that was kind of my second question. Was I know you can sell Dwayne Heisman finalist record set or all that kind of stuff. But when you're working with recruiting a quarterback, what's something behind that? How do you sell the relationship you have with Dwayne? Is that more important? Uh, it's both. It's well, obviously the you can say whatever you want, and, and people talk about you know theory. But the testimony for us is what happened this year. And you just look at the numbers, what happened in his sophomore year for a kid who uh, had no college starts going into his sophomore year. And then in 13 starts, he is where he is. And that's an opportunity to possibly be a first round draft pick and a Heisman Trophy finalist. And then look at you know all the, the, the records he broke in one year. Mm -hmm. I think it's a huge selling point. Uh, third row left, Colin. Ryan, both current players and recruits have talked about the impact of Larry Johnson on them. So, and Bill O'Connor said that go wherever Larry Johnson does. How big of a deal is it to have someone like him on your first <coughs> Huge, huge. Uh, Larry's, uh, he, he's a legend. I mean, he, he has a legacy here. <clears throat> what he's done with the defensive line, it, you know, obviously, again, that's testimony. And so there, there's, you know, defensive linemen all over the country that want to come to get coached by Larry Johnson. And you can see that again in this class. And the relationships that he built are really, really important, but again, Boy, he develops the young men on the field and off the field is what's key. Fifth throw middle. Steve? Yeah, Coach. Straight back. <clears throat> um, you're losing a lot of great skill position players off this team. If 
Campbell, McLaurin. You talk, I know you didn't just shove <coughs> freshmen into those spots, but you did recruit several pretty good wide receivers. Craig Young, athlete. Just can you talk about those receivers, uh, Wilson, uh, Young, and, and and those skill position guys that you're adding? Sure. Yeah, we lose, we lose. You know, some, you know, three really good wideouts and a lot of leadership in that room. They're going to leave a legacy though of. Uh, hard work and and, uh, and leadership that that's hard to replace. That being said, we think we're replacing them uh, with, with some really talented young guys. Jameson Williams is a uh, a deep threat who has uh, legitimate uh, track speed. He can really go. Uh, comes from a great family, great program in St. Louis. So we're excited about him. Uh, we spoke about Garrett, uh, and uh, and so those those are two uh, additions to the program that we think can have a major impact right away. I want to also ask. Uh Talking about relationships with these prospects and, and how they gain that with their position coaches. I know you've said after the Rose Bowl you're going to take a really hard, long look at this and see who will be on the staff next year. But uh, it sounds like Brian Hartline obviously has been elevated and Larry Johnson will be here. Beyond that, can you shed any light of, of where, what direction things may go and what you're looking for in a staff makeup? Sure. Uh, you know, we're very excited about Brian. He did a great job stepping in this year, and then he's done a nice job here in recruiting. So that that's um, that, that's a big hire for us. Uh, that's that's you know, getting him elevated like that means a lot to our program. He's done a nice job with that. And you know, other than that, the, the focus right now is his bowl game, and it was just recruiting because it's just it takes every ounce of your your energy every day. So that's that's the focus. But you know, in terms of uh, putting your staff together, the number one thing that we have to do as a staff is recruit. That's you know by far and above the number one thing as, as an assistant coach that um, you know you need to get done is recruit. And the second thing we talk about is is you know power of the unit, which is you know getting your guys to play hard, making sure that your unit is accountable to everybody in the room. And then the last thing is you know we start talking about scheme and what you put running on the field. So uh, having the right pieces in your staff is very very important. Front row left, Doug. Uh, Ryan, you guys were number two in the country. In class the past two years obviously you're talking about you know, the individual star rating of this right. class is still very high right um, philosophically in terms of you talk a lot about about Ohio and how important that is but in terms of going out and going after the best national guys just can you describe a little bit philosophically what your recruiting style will be like how you sort of felt as a head coach now doing this and and how will Ohio State be able to stay at a level where you're recruiting one of the one, two, three best classes in the country going forward. Yeah, we're going to put a great, you know, our staff is going to be one of the best recruiters in the country. That's the first thing. That, that's the first part of this thing as we move forward. And, you know, when, when you know what Ohio State is all about, you understand the type of student athlete that we're, we're attracting here right now, it's amazing. You know, we're, we're beating some schools, you know, like uh, Stanford and, and, and some really high academic schools. Uh, you know, Harry Miller was an example of that, where, you know, it was us and Stanford in the end, he chose Ohio State. So um, Ohio State attracts uh, everybody. They, they attract people from all over the country. And so, uh, so that's a huge part of this thing. In terms of our program, like I said, we're going to put together a staff of great recruiters. And then we're going to do a great job of loving them up and understand that the culture that we're going to have here is one of love, where we're going to love our kids. They're going to enjoy coming into the building every day. They're going to have great energy. And they're going to be developed at the highest level. Um, but the, the total package, and, and this isn't going to change, and this is why we're keeping the infrastructure the way it is right now, is that you know the, the most comprehensive program from A to Z, from academics to Real Life Wednesday program to Coach Mick and the strength program, all the way across the board, we think is the best in America. We're going to keep it that way. Uh, along those lines, what you've found in these couple weeks, it, will it at all be a, a tough line to balance maintaining continuity of what has been successful here while also establishing this is the Ryan Day head coach program, right? That you're not going to tear everything down. But, you know, I, you, you've got to be you, right? What have you maybe learned in these couple weeks of how you're going to strike that correct balance? Well, I think you, did, you trust your instincts on it. You know, and that uh, I think there's no uh, right or wrong way to do it. You know, you, you, you see the things that you think are, are really good. You look to enhance them. You see the things that maybe you want to change, and then and then you get them you get them changed. Uh, it's not going to be all at once. The good news is there's so much in place right now that we can keep building on, and so uh, I'm not just going to go about changing something that doesn't need to be changed. Yet, it, you know, there is going to be a lot of things that that uh, have my own personality to it that we are going to make adjustments on and look to enhance other areas. Uh, 
So it'll be a work in progress. And last thing on quarterback recruiting specifically, you talked about what you guys did with this offense this year, what Dwayne did. That people noticed that, right? There's not a million Dwayne Haskins out there, but is this what you would like this offense to look like? And as you recruit quarterbacks going forward, is arm talent and the ability to throw the ball that Dwayne has done it, is that going to be near the top of the list of what you're looking for with quarterbacks? Or do you, are you still very interested in quarterbacks who also have a, a real big run threat to their game? I think the number one thing you look for is some sort of extraordinary trade. That's the number one thing you look for. <clears throat> From there, there's a whole other list of, of things that we go through. Certainly our talent, certainly our accuracy is a huge part of that. But the number one we want is some sort of a, a, you know, exceptional trade. And you know, JT had one, and, and, and Dwayne had one. And I think one of our strengths on offense is the ability to adjust the offense to fit the quarterback and to fit our personnel. And I think in college, that's really, really important. Because sometimes if you're looking for a specific style, uh, there may not be one in that class. So let's go find somebody that has some sort of extraordinary talent and then build around it. Uh, but that being said, being able to throw and accuracy is really high up on the list. We've got time for just a few more. We'll, we'll get to everybody who's asked. Uh, far left, Lori. Brian, what would you say is number one lesson learned about recruiting from Urban Meyer? It's about the relationships um, and that it's, it's constant. It's every day. It's text messages. It's phone calls. It's, it's not only to the, key, to the uh, student athlete or the recruit. It's the parents. It's to the uncles. It's to the... Uh, high school coaches, it's all the people that are around them and building those relationships. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. And you've said this a couple times now, one thing that you can see changing about Ohio State going forward is personality. What do you see as seeing the personality change that you're talking about? Well, yeah, I think it's hard to hard to say. I think that you know, as we move forward, everybody has a different way about them, and I'm going to have my own way. And, and um, I think that the guys on the team felt that for the first two months. And uh, we'll continue to do that. But, but to explain it to you right now, I don't know if I can do that. I think uh, it'll happen naturally. Second row, or third row right. Jeremy? Uh, you guys talk about quarterbacks are lining up, receivers are lining up, running backs are lining up. But in Ohio in the last two years, there's been five in-state offensive linemen that have been offered and missed out of those. Have you noticed in the last few weeks what the disconnect is recruiting the offensive line? And how do you intend to adjust that? Yeah, I mean, it's been so busy the last last two weeks. Uh, it's something that, for sure, uh, I'm well aware of, and it's an area that we got to do a better job at. Beyond that, the last two weeks you've had an opportunity to work with Urban that you didn't get in August and early September. How different has that changed? How, how has that changed what you're doing as a head coach? Well, I, you know, you're talking about the last couple of weeks? Nah, it's, it's been awesome. You know, what Coach has done for me and our relationship is strong as ever. Um, been, been a huge help in terms of making this transition and uh, forever, forever in debt to what he's done. And, and it's, it's a great working relationship. And uh, you know, he's given me a lot of information. And obviously, who better to know that, than Urban Meyer? Last two individuals. Ari, Mr. Recruiter, he wants to sneak in one more final question. <laughs> I don't know about that. But. <laughs> Ryan, um, you guys announced soon after um, you took the job that you were keeping a lot of the support staff. Um, and to piggyback a little bit off of what Doug asked, in terms of the personality of recruiting nationally, what was the decision behind keeping Mark Pantone, and how integral was he going to be? Not, I mean, do you work with him to design that philosophy? Does that carry over? And can you just discuss your relationship with him? And yeah, him? yeah. I mean, uh, the last two years, obviously, you know, we got a chance to spend a lot of time together, and you know, in the last couple of weeks, even more time together. And I got uh, the ultimate respect for Mark. I think he's as good as there is in the business. He's really talented at evaluating uh, the players. He works really hard in pushing his staff. Um, I think that what we do with our creative team, what we do with communicating with the student athletes and recruits um, is as, bad, as good as anybody in the country, and he heads that up. He's got a good feel for the coaches, he's got a good feel for uh, the players, what's going on on social media, and he drives it, and he's the driver behind the whole thing. So, um, yeah, he's going to be a big part of this. He's going to be a big um, – you know, part of uh, recruiting moving forward, they got to help me as we start to build that, like you're talking about. Is that like philosophy, though? I know that he does all the programs and all the stuff, but like when it comes to where should we spend time to California, Texas? Should we go national? Like all the things that you guys have thrown. All part of the discussions, yeah. yeah. And those are open discussions every day in our meetings. You know, we have staff meetings, or whether it's over the phone or in, in a conference call. Um, and we're talking about that constantly, and, and Mark's right in the middle of the whole thing. And 
final question. Front row right, Tim. Yeah, Ryan. Uh, recruiting quarterbacks to me is kind of reminded me of a Seinfeld episode where we're talking about getting a car <laughs> reservation. It's not the taking the reservation, it's the holding it that's important. Where's where's this going? I mean, do you think from a from a college quarterback standpoint, uh, I mean, I know you can't talk specifically about some things that maybe happened today, but but it's clearly impacting you guys from a future standpoint. Where where do you see that going? Getting wilder, or what's just your take on it? It's pretty wild right now. That's pretty wild. Um, the, the the thing that's tough about quarterbacks is only one quarterback can play, and these guys they want to play. I think that you know when when recruits are being recruited, they need to understand that the best chance they have to go reach all their goals is to be at a place that can develop them. It isn't about getting on the field right away. One of the best things that happened to Dwayne Haskins, in my opinion, Dwayne will tell you the same thing because we agreed on it, is that when he had his opportunity to play, which was two years in, and he wasn't happy about that. He wanted to play last year. But he'll tell you that he wasn't ready last year. He was ready this year. When he stepped on the field, he was ready. He had two years of development, and he played his best football. And I think it's so important for young quarterbacks to get developed, not just go from place to place, and when things don't don't go well. That being said, one quarterback can play, and so it's it's sensitive and uh, it's a very unique situation. And uh, just a quick follow up on that one: uh, Do you anticipate getting a quarterback to go with this class or transfer type situation in the next couple of months? I mean, is that imperative that you get one? I guess from a number standpoint. But we always want to have four, and it's going to start off with with Dwayne and, and seeing what his his decision is, and then we're going to go from there. And uh, you know, I'm doing a little piece for later, but. Uh, if you look at Ohio State right now, what happened offensively and defensively with this team this year, setting, I think, school record for total offense to this point, maybe setting some records the other way, <laughs> defensively, from yards given up, etc. cetera. Uh, it's almost like a big 12 team landed here this year. I'm just, how, it, how imperative is it for you going forward to get fixed maybe what you saw wrong with the defense? I know it's big for you, but how acute is it, I guess, from a standpoint of a series? I mean, it's, it's the number one thing in our plan to win is to play great defense. And that, that isn't just the guys on defense, that's part of the offense as well. But but yeah, it's it's really, really important for us. It's the tip of our uh, tip of the spirit of the, of the whole team, you know, that special team. And so um, you know I think anybody in the program will tell you that that's um, you know the most important part of what we do in the plan to win is to play great defense. And so that's the expectations here and that's not going to change. And last question, what was the biggest difference that you've noticed in the last three weeks? being a head coach recruiting as opposed to being that assistant coach trying to deliver his guys. I mean, what, what's, what's been your, your biggest adjustment, I guess? Uh, it's, it's been such a, a, a hectic last couple weeks, and I think it was more of getting into the homes and, and telling them uh, the vision of the program and, and kind of getting to know them and giving my background and who I am as a person and having my family come in and meet recruits and, and having them meet my family and showing them pictures of, of who my kids are and, and that's really what it's been like. I think, um, you know, everybody on the recruiting trail really wanted to get to know who I was. And then the second thing was the vision for the program. And so that, that was really the focus in a lot of the, uh, the conversations at Holmes. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Congratulations. Thank you.